Good evening, New York UPC, and welcome back to our digital campus. If this is your first time joining us, we want to offer a warm and special welcome. This week, we continue with the previous week's theme of heaven. When we think of heaven, we all make assumptions of well, who we'll see and what we'll receive. But in the words of Arash Ahmadport, the reason heaven is heaven is because we see Jesus. Tonight, the speaker for this evening is Sister Meg Ahmadport. Take it away, Sister Meg. Hi, everybody. It's wonderful to be back with you this evening. We are continuing our series on heaven called Eternity to Eternity that we began last week. And I have really enjoyed this series and the information that's been shared, the scriptures that we've looked at. I yearn just that much more uh, for heaven. I wonder if you do too, but everything has been so good. And I have asked our very own Daisy Laura to share um, something that she's learned with us in our broadcast tonight. And so you'll be hearing from her also. But uh, I have really enjoyed what we've been learning. So let's continue in this week. And a lot of what had been shared last week is going to help us to answer the question that I'm bringing to us tonight, which is, what do we know about eternity with Jesus? And I think that we all feel from Brother Moss's Wednesday night Bible study last week, we probably all feel that we wish we knew more. <laughs> It was clear last week at his Bible study that although what the scriptures share with us about eternity uh, is there's there are things the scripture is definitive about, there's not a whole lot of detail about what eternity will be like or look like. And so maybe that's just how God, you know, hangs that carrot in front of us, so to speak, and keeps us interested in being with him and interested in getting to heaven, as we say, kind of withholding some of those details. And we'll just have to see what, it, what it's like when we get there. And, but tonight, I think that scripture is clear on at least a couple things about eternity with Jesus. And so I want to turn to our scriptures tonight in just a minute here and look at that. But there's two things that I'd like to point out, I'd like to draw from the scriptures. And so I feel like tonight's probably going to be more of a recap than new information for us, but I think that it's worth mentioning again. So the first thing is that we can expect to be with Jesus for eternity, that Jesus will be with us for eternity. And second, we can expect that all the effects of sin in this world, all types of pain, suffering, lying, cheating, sorrows, 
all of these things will no longer exist. So before I turn to a couple of scriptures tonight about these biblical truths, I wanted to recall Arash's message from last week when he referred to a few misconceptions of heaven, and we, we all have them. But he pointed out that of all the things that we talk about wanting to have in heaven or wanting to see in heaven, that usually Jesus is missing from this picture. And so that's my first point is from all of the scriptures that we have about eternity, scripture is very clear that whatever eternity is, Jesus will be there. That we will meet Jesus. And I was thinking about this language that we use, that we will be with Jesus. Because while we're here in this present life, while we're here on earth, we use the language that Jesus is with me, that Jesus is with us. And Jesus is with us, whether he was walking in the flesh with his disciples or that he's here with us now as the Holy Spirit that resides within us and is in this world. Even the word Emmanuel, speaking of the incarnation when God himself manifests himself in flesh in the form of a baby with the intent purpose to come to be with us. Me in, in that word Emmanuel, meaning God with us. In the Gospel of John, chapter 16, verses 5 through 7, Jesus is speaking to his disciples and he's reassuring them that when he goes away, he's telling them that he has to go away, he's going to die. And they feared that he, of him, the, the disciples feared Jesus leaving them. And Jesus was reassuring them, I'm going to go away, but I'm going to come back. I'm sending back an advocate, a comforter to be with you because Jesus promises to be with us always. And so the scripture reads, but now I am going away to the one who sent me and not one of you is asking where I am going. Instead, you grieved because of what I've told you, which was that he was going away. But in fact, it is best for you that I go away, because if I don't, the advocate won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. So Jesus came to be with us in this life. We see that through all of Scripture. But in eternity, we will go to be with him forever. John chapter 14, verses 2 and 3 says this, There is more than enough room in my Father's home. If, there was, if this were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? This is Jesus speaking. Did you know that Jesus expects to see you in heaven? Think about that. Jesus expects to see you. We just read the scripture that he has prepared a place for you. It says, when everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am. We will be with Jesus for eternity. But until then, Jesus will be with us. Scripture is also clear my second point tonight is that Scripture is also clear that in eternity with Jesus, all things will be made right again. Referring back to that perfect, sinless place called Eden that we read about in the beginning of the book of Genesis. And the Scriptures talk about Eden being the place where God walked with Adam and Eve. But more on that in our Wednesday night Bible study with Desi this week. 
so I'm not going to trample over those verses in Genesis. He will take care of that, and it should be a good Bible study for this Wednesday. But Scripture is clear that all things will be made right in eternity with Jesus. Revelations 21 and 4, it's already been read, but it's a beautiful scripture. We sing about it in our songs, and this is the hope. It says, He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All things are gone. All these things are gone forever. That sounds like somewhere that I want to be. I don't know that I'd want to spend eternity in this life, in this world, as it is. But I can imagine wanting to spend eternity in a place that that Revelation passage just, just described. Heaven, or eternity with Jesus, is spoken of in Scripture as a place that you and I want to be. Who wouldn't want to get to heaven, as we like to say? Um, I remember a Christian series. I saw it a long time ago. I think I only watched a couple episodes, and I don't really even remember the name. Enduring Love or something like that. I believe it's also a book series made into these little episodes on DVD. And... One episode stand, stood out to me. I still remember. don't remember anything else about it. But I liked a phrase that one of the young women, one of the characters in the episode, used. I don't even really remember what was going on in the episode. Um, this was back in Prairie Days. Life was hard and difficult in a way that it's not now for most of us, at least here in the United States and here where we live and. Uh, Delaware or places near us, but there was turmoil in the episode. I believe there was sickness. Um, The episode was just kind of one of those downers. Everything was going wrong, but her little village, their little town uh, in that show came together for her family and, you know, the sick were cared for and they recovered and um, the turmoil and the forgiveness was extended. And so my point is, in the end of the episode, it ended on an, on an upbeat where everything was made right again that had started off and gone so wrong during the episode. And the little young woman character uh, in the end said, this is a glimpse of heaven. And I just really liked that phrase because that is the hope of heaven, that all of the mess, all of the pain, all of the suffering, all of the disappointments, all of the brokenness is going to be made right again in Jesus Christ. And so that is the promise that we have. I think for tonight's lesson, I'm going to end on that note. Sometimes we get the little glimpse of heaven when forgiveness is extended, when wrongs are made right. It's not done perfectly here, but it'll be perfect, done perfectly there for all eternity. No more pain, no more sorrow, no more suffering. And that is our hope. And that we get to spend that time with our Lord and Savior, Jesus. If you would, just pray with me in a closing prayer. Lord, thank you for the hope of heaven. Thank you for the hope of eternity. As frustrating as it can be sometimes, the, that we have such a lack of detail of what eternity will be like. I thank you, Lord, for the details you have provided us, because hopefully it's enough to keep us yearning and to keep us um, running this race, Lord, as the scriptures say, to make it 
Lord, to eternity with you. We thank you for the promises of your word. We thank you, Lord, for reaching for us. I pray each of us, Lord, respond to your touch tonight. Thank you, Jesus, for the team of ministers, Lord, that have covered this topic. And I thank you, Lord, for the information that has been shared and that it encourages us, Lord, tonight, that it bring us hope, that it lighten our burden and lighten our load, God, wherever each of us find us tonight. We thank you for your hope. We thank you for your word that reminds us of this hope. Lord, may we continue to turn to it if we find ourselves in a place where we need that hope. In Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. We look forward to seeing you and more of our broadcast this week. God bless. Thank you, Sister Mark, for that wonderful message this evening, and thank you all for joining us. Please visit us at newarkupc.info where you'll get more information about how to join a small group, submit prayer and baptism requests, and even partner with us in giving. As a friendly reminder, please consider giving this season for our Thanksgiving food drive to feed families in need. You can also find that on our website at newarkupc.info under the tab Thanksgiving food drive. Once again, thank you all for joining us. Have a wonderful evening.